Welcome everyone to Sports Talk Line, where we talk sports 24-7, 365. And on today's episode of Battle for the Big East, we're going to talk to Paul Basketball with Dan Stack. Dan, how are you doing today? Pretty good. I'm uh, excited to talk about DePaul basketball, even in down year. Yeah. It's kind of fantastic. Yeah, it, 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 you know, it, it's been a down year, but I'll say this. When you think of DePaul basketball, I, I really think there has not been a program that has been more impacted by the COVID outbreak. It seems like every time they're either getting hit, the Paul's getting hit with the COVID outbreak or their opponent is. But how do you think, how has COVID impacted the Paul? Um, well, we lying if it said it didn't. Um, they didn't play their first game until December 23rd when people had like five or six, you know, they really started behind the eight ball there. Um, and then they were also bringing in so many new transfers um, and freshmen think they had six newcomers in total so all that time off you know but they also had time to practice but uh, either uh, otherwise you know it was hard to integrate all those new pieces catch up the things get your conditioning back knowing when you're going to play a routine that didn't help um so they're obviously the overall that they played the least amount of teams least amount of games in the big east and only villanova and xavier has played less big east games than them so yeah they've had three outbreaks of their own that's why they started on the 23rd and then they had i think four or five games canceled on the the other side in big east play so it's they got behind the eight ball and then they're starting to try to mesh together and it's really impacted chemistry gotcha and and i think too you know we kind of talked about the negative i think the big negative is covid i mean if you're a basketball fan you're happy your team plays a game because there's a lot of games that are being canceled an hour before the game for various reasons. But, you know, when you look at the Paul program, what are some positives right now that you see in the program? Uh, as far as just the season goes? Just in general, any type of positive you can get from the Paul right now? Well, they are recruiting at a high level. I mean, they brought in um, one of the top 25 recruiting class um, for next year. Um, Actually, two guys started their their journeys early and enrolled in, uh, in the mid or in, in the winter semester. Davy Jones and um, Keon Edwards. So, they Dave Lado, head coach, uh, compiled a great batch of uh, assistant coaches like Mark Shu and Tim Anderson, who really know how to get the grind done in in in, in, um, in recruiting. Um, so that's that's always been good. They. they Pretty, they've gotten some pretty high-level impact transfers um, over the last few years, like Max Drews. Um, they found some diamonds in the in the rough, like Paul Reed. Um, they got a great transfer from Valparaiso, Javon Freeman Liberty. He was pretty much the only consistent player that we can count on this season. So the, the talent has been upgraded each year under Lado. So that's one thing. Gotcha. Now, now flipping the coin because, you know, DePaul, it, it seems like a lot of times they do get talent. A lot of teams pick them or a lot of people, pundits, pick DePaul. You know what? This is going to be the year. They're going to be the dark horse in the Big East. And they can never really get there. Like, what do you think is the biggest weakness of DePaul? It could be from just this year or all throughout the last five to ten years since the Big East realigned. Well, uh, uh, I hate to say it, but I just, I just think – Coach Leto's offensive system is really not conducive uh, in, in today's time. You know, this is a, a floor spacing game where you need everybody to shoot the ball. Uh, maybe one guy who doesn't, but he's going back to the, the 90s mentality where you win with defense and athleticism because they do got, uh, you know, great athletes on their team that could um, run up and down the floor and play great defense. Um, they do play great defense, but any symbol of bond spence in today's game is just not sh- it's manifesting itself these days um just terrible shot selection um not a not a good plethora of shooters maybe like a handful um only like two or three players who could really hit a jump shot um they got good slashers but you know in today's basketball game not just college but i mean look what the um nba has done with the you know with with how golden state really turned the page on how how to win so you know, I just think he's stuck in a, you know, a Dainese mentality when he was, you know, credit to him when, when he was working for Jim Calhoun, that was what was winning back then. But I don't know if he's he's adjusted today's uh, basketball game. Mm-hmm. 
And speaking of winning, hopefully you make a winning choice and click like and subscribe so you can get all our Sports Talk Line videos. But Danny, bring up a good point. You mentioned Dave Leto, and I thought he, he was in an interesting situation when the pandemic broke out. His contract was set to expire. Do they bring him back? Don't they? You know, there's a lot of upheaval. The Paul decided to make uh, the move and bring Leto back. You know, how would you rate the job Dave Leto has done his second tenure at the Paul? Um, it's not been good. Um, I think he's been pretty much last place the whole tenure, maybe second to last or third to last one time. One time they, I think they um, finished last place with three other teams, but uh, they got the 10th seed. Uh, you know, it was, you know, I think he was only brought back because they didn't know what the situation with the old athletic director, Jean Lenti Ponsetto. There was a lot of rumors going into the season that, you know, she was going to hang it up in June and they didn't want to fire a coach and then hire a coach and then bring in a new AD. So we have a new AD from Kentucky, Dwayne Peavy, and they just kicked the, the can down the road to let him prove himself under a new AD, see, see if they could see if it could work out. Cause he did bring in some good talent, but it's not been working. And uh, I just think at the end of the, uh, the uh, season that he's probably going to be let go because he said, this is his sixth year and they've had one winning season. And that was predicated on also doing, doing well in the CBI tournament, which is like a third rate tournament. So, but uh, otherwise, you know, it's been pretty disastrous. Even in a 7-11 season, they were the 10th seed. And that was the high watermark for Big East wins was seven, two years ago. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I think six years is enough time if you can't get to like, like the seven, you know, middle of the pack, five, six, seven, I think it's time to go. Yeah. Now, so you think, you know, you did mention that, DePaul is bringing in a top 25 recruiting class. Is this recruiting class good enough to save Leto? You think you, you already got some kids that are on campus. Do you think they'll be like, do we try one more? Because now let me ask you this question. If they let Dave Leto go, who can they bring in as a replacement? I think that's also something to keep in mind too. Yeah. I, I don't know. There's just, just, there's a lot of what ifs, um, you know, can, you know, Peavy's a Kentucky guy. There's um, a guy that went to the Knicks, assistant coach, um, Kenny Payne. He was a longtime assistant for Calipari. He's on the Knicks. I don't know if he would want to come back into college. Um, and our fans are all uh, all on up and down the board. Maybe the Drake coach who's had a great season. Okay. Um, you know, we got to look at guys who have been out of the game for a couple of years. I don't know what it would take to get someone like John Beeling back in coaching if you know, you give them a, a huge uh, contract because, I mean, DePaul, for all thwarts, I mean, it's in a great position. It's it's in the Big East, one of the top three or four power program, power conferences in, in college basketball. You have Chicago, one of the biggest markets. And in, and in that market, you have some of the best players, the best hotbeds of players. Um, and then the ability to, to rise from the ashes and because, you know, a lot of people young, and I don't blame them, it's been so long since DePaul was good, but back in the late 70s and 80s, they were, you know, the little school under the L that was rose to prominence and take the nations by heart. They were like, they were like this year, I mean, these days, Gonzaga. I mean, they were a Catholic school that recruited well and just started going to Final Fours and and final eights and, you know, just, you know, a couple of bad decisions made by some pretty bad athletic directors over the last 30 years has led to a demise, but it can get back there because they have the right infrastructure with a new, great, energetic, forward thinking athletic director, a great conference to sell, a great uh, conference. I mean, a great conference uh, and a great new, I didn't mention the, the new arena, Winchester Arena, um, playing at Allstate Arena for all those years when you played in the airport hangar near O'Hare International Airport, you know, that was not conducive to winning to bring out fans because they had a commute. It was a, you know, it was like a 25 minute ride to get from Chicago to their, where they played Rosemont Horizon or the Allstate Arena. Mm -hmm. And the new arena, you know, if it gets filled with 10,000 people, it could be a, a cool place to see a renaissance going. And 
we saw it last year when DePaul started 12 and one in a non-conference schedule. A lot of people came out, you know, we were getting like 6,000, 7,000 people out. And those were exciting times and it can be done. Now, now I'm going to throw this like, do, do you consider, I, I had a discussion with John Fanta earlier and he compared, you know, you kind of mentioned the same problems DePaul had, St. John's has had for the last 20 to 30 years where, you know, they, they made some questionable decisions with coaching and athletic directors. You know, they had some people come in and, and for whatever reason, they kind of have, I'm also a St. John's fan too. Um, so I, I've lived through the pain of, you know, they haven't really been big time in the last 20 plus years. They, they've had some rays of hope, but they really haven't come through though. But you kind of mentioned some young coaches too. And, and another program, which let their head coach go to is Fordham. And one of the questions with Fordham is, do you bring in a young guy who looks at, let's say, we'll switch it to DePaul, who's going to use, no, I'm going to rebuild DePaul, then go somewhere else? Or do you want to get someone who is maybe kind of like a beeline, like you mentioned, who has a proven track record, who's going to come in and stick around for a while and be like, no, I want to be this home. So like, which which one do you think would be better? Someone who comes in and looks like DePaul as a stepping stone or someone who wants to be like, no, what, DePaul is my last job? I'm okay with both. Um sides of the coin you get an energetic guy who comes in charms the city um and he's like you know he energizes the base with his youthful energy and then they start winning and you get attached to him and maybe you could rally him for for decades or whoever you know years and years but i but for this point i'm very more getting a proven coach if they if it's possible i get a proven coach that's one and then immediately um, restructures things, changes the culture, gets recruiting classes, has a great um, skill set for coaching like X's and O's, mm -hmm. and get that immediate success. Um, and then line it up so that it's very attractive for the young guys in the next time. Or in a case of Bailene or if Thad Matt, I, I don't know what Thad Matt is, uh, uh, health problems. I know he's a big bad problem, but if he ever, if his, that problem got better to someone like him. And then you also bring in somebody like uh, a very young guy as a sidekick who could take over if, you know, in a couple of years they want to retire. Okay. No, no, I'm going to bring this, this other name up who is actually coaching in Chicago right now, uh, who's having a good season this year, Porter Moser. Do you think if the poll comes open, do you think he would be someone where it's like, no, he knows the city, he could sell the city. He's won before. He's made some magical runs in the NCAA tournament. Do you think that could be a guy, even though he's 52 years old, it could be someone like, hey, listen, he he, he can he can lead us to victory. Um, well, uh, our, our fan base is kind of split on him because outside of his run at Loyola, he wasn't really good at Illinois State, but you can't deny what he's doing at Loyola. It's very, very impressive going to the Final Four alone. And now getting back in the top 25 now, um, you can't deny that maybe he's learned a few better things over the last few years because, you know, they've been a, probably, they, you know, obviously they've been the best program in Chicago um, in the last five, six years. And, you know, I'm, I'm willing to, I would be willing to give him a shot. I think he could do some good things. It, it depends on the staff. He's got to recruit. Um, uh, at a higher level instead of the Missouri Valley. I don't know if he has the chops to do that. You want somebody with more ties to uh, high major programs who can recruit at that level. But I think he's got an exciting offense. He's got, you know, that he's got, he's adapted to that, um, you know, modern basketball philosophy with one big and four guys, who, you know, could shoot on the out, you know, one in, four out. So um, I'm very open to the possibility. And I, I think, um, he could be a good candidate. Bottom line is could be. All right. So you, you kind of now our last question before we leave, you know, you, you might have hit on some of the things already. What does the poll what needs to happen to have the poll become a consistent winner in the Big East where they're like the top, the top half of the Big East? You kind of mentioned some of the things already, but you could probably summarize those and maybe elaborate on some few a few other things too. Okay. Well, I think one of the big thing is one of the things I told you earlier is Leto has improved the uh, town level each year he's been here. Um, but in the quest of doing that, he has run off a lot of players and there's been no continuity for the last seven years. They, He's only had one player who graduated, who, who was, came as a freshman and has left as a senior. And that was actually somebody that Purnell recruited. 
So, you know, in six years, there's only been one guy that's been there for four years. So they need a, a culture of continuity, build, get a good recruiting class the first time, build them up, start winning. You'll get more wins. You'll get better recruits. The fans will come back in. You just got to start with a foundation, build slowly, keep winning each year more, more. That's something Leto has never, you know, has done, hasn't done except for one year that two years ago, but he didn't, he didn't expound on that after that run to the CBI. So it's all about structure and placing a good culture in the beginning and building around that and getting the team to buy in and, um, you know, building a roster full of shooters and force placers and a couple of enforcers down low and just build from there and just let it keep flowing naturally. Gotcha. All right. Dan, before we leave, can you tell people where they can find you on social media? I'm uh, at stackdemon.com. I'm the uh, senior writer at wearedepaul.com, the 247 sports site for We Are DePaul. Com. I'm the 247 sports for DePaul Athletics. All right. All right. Thanks for coming on, Dan. And remember, listen like you play with intensity.